Hey guys, thanks for watching. Before we get started, make sure to subscribe here to Fino Boxing and follow us at all our social media platforms at Fino Boxing and my personal one is at Adriana underscore sports. Enjoy. Yo, yo, yo. What's happening, people? We're back in the chair for the Instagram Live. Um, how's everyone getting on? Are we bored? Are we learning new things? Are we working out more? Are we eating better? Are we getting some fresh air? Are we thinking? Are we trying to improve ourselves? Are we coming back stronger? I hope all of those uh, things are. So we are going to be talking very shortly uh, to Amir Khan. Of course, uh, one of the great figures of... Uh, British boxing, yeah, sorry, I know I need a haircut, it's terrible, I know. Um, world boxing, great stalwart, and all of a sudden, he's online, going to be connecting now. Oh, he's declined me. Oh, I'm here, I'm here. You declined me, my friend. Send another request in. That's a good start, though, to be fair. So, I saw a lot of stuff... Um, Amir Khan did an interview the other day about talking about whether he has another fight left in him, what's the plans for the future. That's what we're going to talk about with Amir today. We'll give it another go. We're trying to connect now. Here we go. Hey! Sorry, man. Sorry, mate. I pressed the X button. I thought something happened. So hey, the good the news is, I've, I've noticed that now you've had a shave, you look a lot younger. You know, I look back so 25 years ago. I'm going to do that myself, mate, because we're stuck you know, here in I isolation. Think, I think the last time, when was the last time you had a shave? No, oh, mate, this is, no, this, uh, yesterday morning. You know, us, us real men, <laughs> this is how we grow our stubble. Do you know what I mean? That is going back again that quick. <laughs> hey, how are you been? How's well? life treating you? What's happening? I know you, listen, you love to be on, on your uh, travels as much as me. You're oh. always flying around here, there and everywhere. What, what's it been like yeah. for you? I know it's been getting to spend a bit hard. more time with the kids. Yeah, it's been quite hard, but to be honest with you, I think it's a good thing as well because I've got to spend time, quality time with my family, my wife, my kids, obviously newborn baby as well. So, um, and I, and you know, I'm spending more quality time with them at home, taking them out in the garden, um, you know, do some exercises with them. See, I got two plots on in in my house where I've got another annex, so I can walk across there sometimes. I can get my alone time there, make my phone calls, and have my little chills. But overall, I mean, you do get bored. Mm. Uh, I want to hit the gym properly like I've got a little gym at the house but I want to hit a proper gym so that way I could do a proper workout you know hit some bags do some shadow boxing and watch look myself in the mirror and stuff like that while I'm shadow boxing but it's hard you know and um, I can just imagine uh, a lot there's a lot of people are probably watching this but they must be getting so frustrated at home but you have to stay strong through this period of time now where we have to stick together and I think it's great what you're doing here Eddie one well, of just trying, we're just people. trying to keep. We're just trying to keep people with content. Keep people talking about boxing. What's your advice, Amy? You've 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 done everything in boxing, but to the younger fighters right now, you know, we know that boxing can save lives. It can keep mm. you disciplined, give you that regimental lifestyle. Yeah. But obviously, some people now they don't have the camaraderie of a camp. They don't have the time to go in and yeah. and and. But now, more mm. than any time, try and close the gap on the fighters above you, and try yeah, and definitely. improve yourself somehow. Yeah, that's it. And the best way of doing that, you know, for me, the best thing was to move away. Sometimes being around your comfort zone, being in the UK for me was a little bit difficult. A lot of people knew who I was. My friends were always over at the gym. You want to impress them. You're not learning things. And, um, you know, whereas when I went to America, I was away from everyone. I was isolated in a training camp on my own uh, with just my gym mates. Everything around that camp was about boxing and I was watching fights and watching things and you know where you're away from all the distractions and i think that's where a lot of the young guys have to do now they have to kind of lock themselves away because you, there's a lot of there's a look nowadays we have all this instagram twitter and everything and i think it can take your eye off the game sometimes if you start reading the comments of people don't let that get to you as well because sometimes that can put you right down mm. and i think f uh, with these up-and-coming fighters they need to stay a little bit more focused on the boxing forget what people are saying because if i I'm, i've been one of them fighters where if I let people, all the shit I get and all the things I've read about myself, if I let that get to me, it would have destroyed me. But don't ever let that thing, those things get to you because you know what? It's only going to put you down. 
I've seen you get loads of stick. Listen, so do I on social media as well. Do you not <laughs> read? Do you, have you stopped reading it now? Are you a case where... No, I do I've, read it. I've, Look, you, you do read it. You probably read it as well, Eddie. You know, I do read it. Yeah, but you, do read it's, it. different, it's different for me because the fans are yeah. my customers, right? Yeah, yeah. They're also your customers, but really you're a fighter. Mm. So you're your own mm. man and you're yeah. in the toughest job of all. So really, yeah. I feel worse for fighters getting stick because, listen, I'm just a chubby geezer who goes to the office. You're putting in the miles. You're putting in the yeah. hard spars. You're putting in the runs. You're dedicated. But people don't realise that. No, I know. And I think that's what people need to realize. Look how hard we work. Like you might, you might fight, you might, you might win some, you lose some. But you know, there's the work that we put in. Ten weeks of training camp, away from your family, away from your friends, and you're literally waking up in the early hours in the morning, going for a run. You come back home, you sleep again, you hit, you eat, and then you um, train again. I mean, it's 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 hard, man. It's not easy, and still to get a stick for that. And you think, you know, if people knew my life, really. They think you live this lavish life and everything. But when you're in training camp, it's not a lavish life, man. I mean, even yourself, Eddie, you probably travel all the way around the world. Not because you like traveling. People probably think you're traveling because you love it. But no, it's work. Mm. You know, you travel for work. Sure. Well, listen, one thing we're not doing at the moment is traveling. So I saw, a really, <laughs> I saw a really interesting article yesterday. I think it was Boston yeah. Scene or something like that, talking about your future. You know, mm. and talking about the fact that you don't know what's next or when's next or if there is anything next and that was exactly. something that sort of grabbed me from the article that you're not guaranteeing right now that you're not done in this yeah sport. i'm, I'm not know, i'm not would... done yet no no i still have a couple of fights left in me one or two at least um i just feel that um you know i've been in the game a very long time i've had almost 40 fights over 39 fights and you know i've had a brilliant career and i, and I love the sport in to bits you know but I think uh, there's going to come a day where I want to do other things as well because it's hard for me to do my charity work and do all my appearance stuff and travel the world because on back of my mind, there's always boxing. I've always got boxing on back of my mind. I can't really chill out properly, you know. But till, the, till I say I'm done from boxing, then I can feel free, you know. I've, then I can feel like I can do whatever I want. But at this moment of time, you know, I, just, I still, I still want to fight. And we just don't know how long this coronavirus is going to last. Is it going to last a year? It, it sits it quite well with you, though. Like when when we talk about your your always your break with Ramadan, now that's something yeah. that's always been sometimes difficult to schedule your fights around. But actually, yeah. this this might actually work in the benefit of you because no one is going to be fighting during that period. So really, for me to get hopefully, if after Ramadan, once Ramadan's over, uh, end of summer, maybe that's when they'll allow sports happening again, and hopefully then I can start my training camp. So in a way, I think everyone's. It's a setback for everyone. Normally, I'm, every year I've had a setback because of, of Ramadan. I have to stop training. I miss a, pay, a big payday. I miss out a fight. But still, I think sometimes having a bit of a break, I think this break might do a lot of good for a lot of people because it'll give them a chance to kind of realise where they want to be, what they want to do in the in the life, in their career. And also, I think it'll be good in a way where give their body a rest as well. You know, being in the gym every day, sometimes you don't need that. I know a lot of young fighters who are always 24-7 in the gym training their ass off. You don't need to be in the gym every day. You need a yeah. break as well, man. You know what? One thing I just want to talk about is sparring because there's been a lot of people yeah. talking lately about sparring and the effects that yeah. hard sparring can have on. And there's a, there's a kind of school of thought now. The old school of thought is the hard spars are absolutely integral to the training camp. And the kind of like the new thought is maybe you shouldn't have too many tough spars. Where do you stand no. on sparring? You, listen, you've been around, you've been in so many different camps. Yeah. What, what's your so every, advice? Every coach is different. Yeah, every coach is different. I work with all the coaches from Freddie Roach. So Freddie Roach is a coach that likes hard sparring. And literally a week just before the fight, you stop to your spar. Your last spar is on the Monday and you fight on the Saturday. So anything can happen then. You know, you can get caught, you're losing weight, you, your skin's a little bit thinner. But I think um, with sparring, See, every time I was in the wild card, it was, it was always a war. You know, I was sparring guys like Povetnikov uh, and all the top elite Russian fighters. They were all there. And everyone wants to knock your head off. I was even sparring Manny Pacquiao. I mean, Manny Pacquiao wasn't going easy. It was a full-on hard spar. We were head-to-head -head and toe-to-toe. -to -toe. But I just feel that um, it does take a lot out of you. See, when I had that fight against Peterson, I just felt gassed out man I think I'd left it all in the gym and I think sometimes when you have too many hard spars and this was 12 rounds after 12 rounds we were doing sometimes doing too many rounds in the gym you can leave it in the gym as well 
So I think some, you might want to ease it off a little bit, you know, take your foot off the gas. Sparring's about, you know, getting the timing right. As soon as you know you got the timing right and you've got your, as I've got older, I've kind of realized it a little bit more. I think sparring around about 100, 150 rounds or 100 rounds uh, for a training camp, for a fight, is probably enough. So yeah, I've done like 300 rounds of sparring, 400 rounds mm. of sparring, and that's where I felt flat. Mm. So you don't want to leave in the gym. We talk about Manny Pacquiao there. When you've got, when you talk about your career now moving forward, yeah. you've, you've achieved so much. Is it the, the facts of you want, you know, the legends, you want the biggest events? I mean, people talk about Manny Pacquiao. There's a lot of messages coming in about your friend Kel Brook as well. Yeah. You know, people still want to yeah. see that fight. Is it just, yeah. you know, you want, if, if you come back to this sport now, it's got to be the biggest fights possible. It has to the be biggest the biggest, coach. definitely, man. I mean, it's what motivates me now. You know, when you've made so much money in the game, You've done so well. You won the world titles. What's going to motivate you? It's going to be the big fights, you know, and obviously the big, big name fights. Now, I think a Manny Pacquiao fight is huge. That'll be massive anywhere in the world, wherever it, wherever, wherever it was. Then you've got other names like you got Kel Brook. I think that's another massive fight in the UK. But obviously, what's the situation with that fight now? I know he's gone up to one fifty-four. Yeah, he's he's sort of at fifty-four, but he made it so easy last time. You know, I yeah. believe he can still make 47. I still think he's a disadvantage for him at 47, as it yeah. was in the Errol Spence fight. I think yeah. it's quite an interesting situation because I think that Liam Smith summed it up quite well, where he was sort of right. saying that the situation Liam Smith's in with Kel is a bit like uh, uh, Kel's in with you. Whereas mm. you you want to look, you know, you're looking at Pacquiao. Everybody wants you to fight Kel Brook in the UK. Liam Smith wants to fight Kel Brook really bad. Yeah, so, yeah. Kel Brook wants to fight you. Or fights yeah, yeah, makes sense. You know, so it's like an interesting situation. But listen, for me, as we know, that you know, we're not going to go into it. To a situation with with Kel Brook, for me to come back to that is a massive stadium fight. If he stays at yeah, fifty four, I do like no. the Liam Smith. Where where do you sit on uh, Brook Liam Smith as a fight? See, I sparred with Liam Smith when I was training um, for which fight was that one? I think that was for the Crawford fight. I think it was for the Crawford fight. I was sparring with Liam Smith. And um, you know he's strong, comes forward. He's, he's a, look. He's a he's a very good fighter. His his timing is amazing. Um, look, at one fifty four, probably not one of the biggest hitters, but he is quite strong with his body pressure and his weight. You know, like to use his weight and put that pressure on you. I mean, him and Kel Brook would be a fifty fifty fight. Mm. I mean, it would be a good fight. I think Kel's uh, accuracy is very good. I think timing wise, I think it'll be it'll be like a game of chess if they fought each other. It'd be a good fight. Okay. Well, listen. Would you ever make that happen? Yeah, I'll make it happen. Come on, I both make, you know, so. Yeah, I still want to make you V Kel, but we'll see where we get with that <laughs> when, we, when we start back. But listen, yeah. I appreciate you coming on, mate. We're going to no, move on you, to, to another guest. Thanks for everything. Take care of yourself and your family. Thank and we'll you speak very soon. Much, it. Cheers, Amir. Bye, Bye, mate. Bye. Bye. Amir Khan, listen, love him or hate him, what he's done for the sport has been incredible. And from people that have achieved everything to people that are on their way to achieving much pleased to shortly have on Terry Harper, the WBC 